Good afternoon, uh, everybody, and welcome to um, Art 192, uh, Photoshop slash digital imaging um, for the fall semester 2021. Today, we'll be continuing um, with lesson 10 um, and focusing on uh, the mixer brush and digital painting and Photoshop. What I wanted to start with today is uh, where I left off on uh, Monday. Um, going back and back to the palette we talked about and showing you um, today, in fact, I'm working instead of the mouse, I have my Wacom tablet. So to show you some of the differences, um, one of the things if you can see, okay, here, is that this is uh, the stylus that comes with a Wacom tablet. So it resembles a pen. It also um, comes with an airbrush if you want. The other end here is for an eraser, if you want. The tablet, the size that I'm working with, I think is six by eight, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, now something this size is close to $400. They come in smaller sizes. Um, they come in larger sizes, so they are not cheap. Um, but they are, <clears throat> again, they're designed to simulate a traditional tool, meaning with a paintbrush or a pencil, the harder you press, the bolder the line, the lighter you press, the lighter the line. And also, de depending on the type of brush you're working with, um, if it's a round brush, uh, it really doesn't matter the angle that you're working with. But if you're working with a flat um, brush or a filbert, which is kind of a cross between a round and a flat, then um, it could have, uh, depending on the angle that you hold the brush, and um, you'll get a different kind of mark. So what I wanted to do briefly is to show you in here, um, I've got the, the round fan brush tool and um, I've got the setting. I've already placed some yellow paint here and I also have some red that I'm gonna work with and I have wet set to wet. And I also have that it's um, gonna go ahead and it's going to load the brush after each stroke and it's going to clean the brush after each stroke. So if I come in here and you can see that as I change the angle of the brush, that little graphic representation changes the brush. So if I place it here and I start to press, and I'm pressing pretty lightly, you'll notice that the red that I've used really doesn't show up that much because it's mixing with the yellow and I get more of an orangish th color than I did before. Now, when I come back out here and I paint, you'll see that it is that nice red that I picked in the upper, le upper left-hand corner and down in the lower left. And if I switch back and forth, if I click and I drag like so, you can see how the colors are mixing with one another. Really kind of nice. So it's like, you know, working with wet oils. Um, not so much with acrylics. Acrylics are dry pretty quickly. But again, you can mix, if you wish, um, the colors just as you would in the real world um, on your palette um, digitally. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show you is that I worked on the painting a little bit more. Now, the version that they have here, it looks like so. Um, this is the version that I did, similar, um, but a little bit different. And again, I'm working with <clears throat> the, um, the round brush again. Now, if I paint in here, notice that the red wants to come through. But if I clean the brush, so let's clean it. And now I put, whoops, I don't want that. I wanna make sure that this remains clean. And I come back in here and now it's just like, you know, smearing the, smearing the paints. And if I work inside the green and go to the blue, notice how it smears it out. If I work from the blue or the white of the sky and I pull it in, notice how it brings it in. So you're working kind of wet into wet. 
And if you make sure that you work with sample all layers, then you're really taking the existing photograph that underlies it, okay? And your um, the original photograph. And I remember from Monday, somehow I lost those additional layers. Um, <clears throat> and it allows you to, um, uh, to take the colors from the photograph and use them. So you don't have to, again, concentrate on the composition. You don't have to work, uh, concentrate on the color palette. If you like the colors that you're working with from the photograph and you can continue to work. Now, some of the other things that you can do on here too. So if I go ahead and I switch from wet to um, a dry brush, I go ahead and I pick up the red and I start to, you know, paint across here like so. Whoops, I wanted that to be, let me undo that. Well, you know what? I can do that a little bit differently. Um, this is what I wanted to show you, but it's fine. I made a mistake here. I went wet into wet with the, with the red and I'm working here. Now, what I can do is I can erase, but if I, if I select the eraser tool, watch what happens. Okay, it erases from this layer. Another tool that's available to us is right above the eraser tool, and it's a history brush. And what it will do is it will go back to your last saved version. So now when I paint, it's going back to the last saved version that I had. And you can see that even some of the other little um, strokes that I made just a moment ago were the um, smearing paint from one end to another. Um, allows me to go back and to um, and get rid of it and clean it up, which is really kind of nice. So you might want to um, explore the history brush a little bit. You might want to use the eraser, provided you're working on multiple layers. That also is useful. Let me come down here. Yeah, you can see how it's going back to the original. And if I do this enough, it might go, and depending on what you're working on, it could go back to the original painting itself or the original photograph. Now, another thing that you might want to look into is that you'll notice that I've covered up a good chunk of the underlying photograph. But let's say I want to bring some of these um, branches back in here. Um, and I, I painted them out and I can't see them. So what I could do is I could come back and I can work with, for example, um, let's go ahead and let's work with, I'm gonna work with the, the 30 um, pixel brush here. And right now it's set to normal. Um, I wanna, yeah, leave it normal, but I wanna make sure that I'm working with um, the, uh, the mixer brush tool. So I'm going to switch and I'm going to come back and use it up from here. Let's go back. That's the fan brush. Let's come down here and let's use a different one. Um, I'm going to work with, um, for example, tree highlights. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear. There we go. Clear that and leave it wet and let's see what I get in here. And it's picking up some of that red and that's not what I want. Um, so what I want to do, let me try again. I'm gonna try again with the, um, let's go back up here with the round fan brush. And let's paint again and see what I have. Yeah, now it's just smearing some of the colors in here. That's what I want. But if I want to see and return some of the branches, I can make my brush, you know, a little bit smaller by hitting the left bracket key. I can go ahead here in the layer that I'm working on, and I can reduce the opacity of it so I can actually see through. And now what I can do is I can come back and continue to work on that layer, and I can maybe I'll work with my eraser and I'll come back and I'll paint in here if I can see what I'm doing in here. 
There we go. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to erase. And it doesn't look like I'm doing much at the moment. Um, let's come back again to the top. I'm going to erase in here a little bit. Because I'm, I'm trying to bring back some of those um, branches. Uh, let's move over here a little bit. Now let's go ahead and bring the opacity back up and see if I've made any changes that are significant. <clears throat> and it, it's a little bit, you know, working in the dark, but you can see that I brought some of that back in. And now if I want, I can come back with the, that br smear brush and I can paint some of the, the background out again, leaving the, um, the branches. So let me go back up in here. There we go. Let's come back in here. I'm just going to smear it a little bit. But I want to zoom in. That might be helpful. You know, these are things that you can't do in traditional media. And I can come back, and when I zoom in like that, I can be um, a little bit more precise. And again, you know, my goal is to get rid of every little bit of um, of the photo, the detail data that you find in the photograph. And there's still a little bit more work that I could do on here. But I'm overall, I'm kind of pleased with what I have here. So those are some extra things that you can do and use. Remember, you have the history brush to work with now. Um, play with dry brush, wet brush, um, various settings, different kinds of brushes. Um, I like the brushes that work with a lot of, that uh, create a lot of texture. Um, I think that really is a nice contrast to working with photographs. Um, it's a, you know, textural quality that you can get that you just don't get um, with any other kind of um, tool. So having said that, um, I'm recording this, but now I'm going to stop the recording. And I'm not going to say goodbye. I'm just going to end it for the time being. So it's really a kind of a short lecture, but it's a continuation of the other. And I'm going to begin to show you the, um, uh, the video by John Derry on uh, lynda.com. At least it used to be called lynda.com. Now it's LinkedIn Education or something like that. Anyway, um, for those of you who um, aren't familiar with um, lynda.com, uh, let me see if I can't find it. Where did I put it? I have it up here, I believe. Um, yeah, here we go. So what you need to do is you need to go to, um, uh, I closed it, but I mean, this is what we're going to watch. This is um, John Barry and uh, how he uses uh, Photoshop and Painter to create digital paintings from photographs. He'll start with um, working from life, and then he's going to um, work a couple of different ways um, to turn the photograph into a painting. Now, you all of you have access to these videos. Um, obviously, I've recorded them on Canvas and made them available to you. But instead, what you might want to do is to go to the LA County you know, so that you have your own library of videos. Go to the LA County um, uh, library.org. And what you want to do is um, before you, if you don't have a library card with them, get a, a, a digital library card. So it, it's not that difficult. Um, here's your library card application. Um, also, what you want to do is make sure that you get, once you get the library card, get a PIN number. You will need both. And then what we can do is we can go back to, um, well, let me go back to that again. And what you'll do is you'll go to digital library and here it is, it's called LinkedIn Learning. That's what it's called now, formerly lynda.com. And when you click on that, it's gonna ask you to put in, when you say get started, you're gonna have to put in your library card number and your PIN number. Now I've already done that. So if I go back here, we're already logged in. 
So you do have access to that, all of those, the, the entire library of um, from LinkedIn Learning. And they have thousands and thousands of videos on any number of subjects. So that's what I wanted to show you today. I'm gonna begin um, showing you this video and there's one more by John Derry that I want you to see. Um, actually, you know what, before we see his video, um, just a couple more minutes, I wanna show you um, on my, whoops, not that. That's not what I wanted to show you. Um, let's go back again. I had um, a Pinterest. So let's go back again. Um, I had a Pinterest. Let me see if I can find that. Um, here it is. So I hope, hopefully everybody can see this. If not, let me go back and um, do this again. Because here, and I'll show you these samples again. Here we go. Um, I saved on Pinterest a whole slew of um, digital paintings that are, some are done in Photoshop, some are done in Painter and Painter. Um, but they range from a variety of landscapes to choose from. And notice how painterly they all are. You can do portraits. You can do figure painting um, this way. Um, they can get fairly abstract. So this is the direction that I'm going for, even if you pick something like this for the next assignment, if this pops up, there we go. So you can see that um, just very, very painterly. And then, you know, these have a, a strong textural quality and a tactile quality to them. They're really quite nice. So that's what I wanted to, to show you. Um, let me go back again. I didn't want that, I wanted mine. Well, that's enough of that. So let's go ahead and start watching his video. And as I said, um, I'll show you those again on another day, but I have um, recorded a number of them for you and saved them so that you have lots of examples from which to choose. And I suggest you find many of your own. So I'm gonna pause the recording and the short time that I've talked today um, will be posted on my YouTube channel, but um, because I don't wanna infringe on his copyrights, um, on uh, LinkedIn Learning's copyrights. I've recorded these already and put them on Canvas so they're for uh, us to, to view um, separately. They're not public for everyone. Okay, so if there are any questions, I'm gonna go ahead and again, I'm gonna pause <clears throat> the, um, pause the recording and we're gonna watch John Derry. Any questions before I move on? No? Okay, so I'm gonna not say goodbye. I'm just gonna go ahead and pause. Zoom the recording. Yeah, so I'm, gonna, I'm stopping the, um, the video that we're watching with um, uh, John Derry for the time being. There's a little bit more to watch, but um, uh, to finish up the day, what I wanna do is to, again, encourage you to do a Google search um, and just put in um, digital paintings. You can also put digital paintings um, done in Photoshop and Painter. And there are just a slew of them. Um, some of them are quite, um, look like they were done with airbrush. I don't think you would ever um, assume that they were done with the, their photo. They have a certain realistic look, but a stylized realism. I don't think you would ever um, think that they were a photograph. That's a nice look, but um, again, just to depart from what we've been doing so far this semester, I'm thinking instead that we do something a little bit more like this. And again, it can be um, a landscape, if you wish. It can be a portrait. It can be, you know, in that realm of figurative painting. It can be an interior, an exterior. 
of a building, um, whatever, you know, subject matter um, you find interesting. And they can be quite abstract. I mean, here's one here that's clearly referencing um, a landscape um, with the water in the foreground and in the middle ground, we have off in the distance, um, looks kind of like a village or something, and then we have the sky. So it's kind of broken up into two thirds, you know, a small part here and then one third. Um, uh, that's kind of typical for the way many of these are constructed. And again, if you have experience with, um, with drawing and painting, if you've taken, you know, maybe a, a GOPES class or, um, you know, somebody else from our, 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 um, our department, um, you know, explore some of the possibilities that you can do with digital painting. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, some of the advantages that have been talked about is that you can easily undo what you've done, especially by working on separate layers and you can revise and change without the fear of really making a mistake. Um, that's, I think, the advantage of it. The downside of it is that, um, at least it's a, I find it to be a downside, is that when I've um, worked from life and I've worked on a real canvas or a real piece of paper with a, a, you know, a pencil or a charcoal or something, it has a physical tactile quality to it. And working digitally is more cerebral. Even when you're working with a Wacom tablet, it's a very slick surface. And it's something that I have yet to really get um, acclimated to. Um, but it's something that I think it's worth exploring. These do have um, commercial value. Um, if you're interested in doing commercial paintings, um, it might be a way for you to earn some additional income. And that you can do a single painting digitally and then you can print them out on canvas and do a series of them and do an, you know, have an addition uh, uh, in that of, um, you know, from one to 10 or more in that series. And they can be sold to, um, you know, uh, commercial buildings, you know, the offices like a doctor's office, or you'll very often see paintings like this, especially the landscapes and the still lifes and that sort of thing in um, uh, hotels, motels, that sort of thing. Um, so they really, um, for you, it will help you to do fewer paintings, but make more money. Um, that's the commercial end of fine art that I think um, is worth exploring. So anyway, um, that's all I have to do uh, to show you today. Um, and again, this is going back to my little painting here that I did for our, uh, our you know, uh, our exercise, you know, there's the, the one that they did. And here's the landscape that I did. Um, similar, but a little bit different. And I expect all of yours to be a little bit different as well. So um, that's it for today. Um, on Monday, I'll probably talk about this a little bit more, but we will begin next week working on um, lesson 11, which is, um, uh, we're kind of running to the end of our, our lessons, even though it's only midterm. So um, there'll be more videos that I'm going to have you guys watch on retouching and restoring um, photographs, as well as some more digital painting videos that we can watch. Um, that's pretty much it for today. I'm going to go ahead and um, pause the recording, and I'll make this available to all of you on my uh, YouTube channel. Um, for you to look at it at a later date, if you wish. Um, and if something else that I haven't mentioned that if um, I tend to, to speak slowly, um, you can alter the speed in YouTube. You can speed it up if you wish. Some of you may already are aware of that. Um, so you can go through the entire lecture in probably half the time or even quicker if you want. Um, and just glean from it the essential parts that you find valuable to you. Okie doke. So um, again, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to go ahead and pause um, the recording again. And um, I'll see everybody. Uh, have a good weekend. And I'll see all of you on Monday. Okay. Bye-bye.